Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you know, I have a new perspective. Just understand that I realized that I'm not tired. Now, you know, people say I'm tired of all of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of going through this. I'm tired of going through that. Well, I realized that I'm not tired. I realize that we have a system here that is predicated upon wearing people down, causing people to get tired. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a philosophy. This is not me making up. I got a new attitude. I'm in control. My worries are few. Okay, this is not that type of situation. This is... I realize, despite everything, look, yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, sorry, no, it was yesterday, I'm thinking this is midnight, anyway, it's only 9.46, but I've been up, I've been up and up and up, I went to sleep yesterday at 7, woke up at 10, went back to sleep at 3, woke up at 5, do you see that sleep pattern right there? Because I was exhausted, ladies and gentlemen, I had to put up two of those, uh, it's called a uh, build a shed or something like that. Uh, it's uh, these little portable sheds. They're made out of vinyl and I needed storage. So I bought two six by six, six by six, six by six. I'm about to buy two 10 by 20s. But for right now, two six by six. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand. Get it. Got it. So that it's clear. Just standing up, helping the guy, putting dirt into a wheelbarrow. Several times I had to sit down, and then I couldn't sit down because my back was killing me. And you're the kind of fellow that says my lord's back is killing me. I'm that type of guy. Anyway, and no matter if I sat down, if I laid down, if I, man, getting back up, whoo-wee, that was a struggle. And by the time the end of the day came, I was completely exhausted. And then today... I went to the chiropractor, and the chiropractor did his slap, slap, click, click, clack, 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 click, 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 clack, because he uses this thing called an actuator. If you've never had a chiropractor use an actuator, ask your chiropractor about an actuator and see how that feels. I promise you, you're going to notice a difference. Anyway, plug, 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 plug. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I'm a little restless trying to go to sleep, trying to occupy my mind before I go to sleep with something to distract me because I left the house today to mail out some letters, to mail out some of our people's suits to the courts. And I'm trying to figure out, you know what, how to hit these stupid courts in the head because I found out that federal judges technically, technically don't have to be bonded. Why? Well, because Article Three judges don't have to be bonded. But wait a minute, what? Article three judges don't have to be bonded. Say what? I thought you said they had to have an exceptional obligations bond. Not so. Only the ones who are dealing directly with money and property have to have an exceptional obligations bond. So what can we do? Oh, that's easy. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, they're not article three judges. Okay, let me explain. I called the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. The Administrative Office of the United States Courts. The Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Yes, the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. What'd you call them for? Well, I called the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. The Administrative Office of the United States Courts. Yes, the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. And I said, hey, yo, homies, your people giving me problem at the uh, district court. They said, we can't control the district court. I said, really? Are you sure? They said, yeah, we're sure. I said, what about the bond? They said, well, send us some information on the bond. So I sent them what I could. <sighs> then we started talking about judges and they talked about the bankruptcy court judges that they're article one judges now i confused article one with executive which is article two article one is congressional but they're article one judges bankruptcy judges are legislative courts the supreme court said just as much in williams versus united states 1933 if bankruptcy court judges are article one judges and what the f are they doing in the district court? No, 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 no. You don't get it, do you? The branches of government do not get to share powers. That's why it's called separation. Separate. Okay, they must be separated. 
AVAD. Let them know about separate. Okay? They must be separated. They cannot join together. Wonder Twin Powers. It is not possible. It's called separation of powers for a reason. So what the is bankruptcy legislative court judges doing in the same building, sitting in the same courtrooms as district court judges. Wait, no, no, hold on. Y'all don't understand. No, those are two different courts. They said the blah, blah. No, they don't because magistrate judges are also Article One judges. Some of them are Article Four, but most are Article One judges. Well, the courts say that they can both sit and, and, and handle cases and they can do the ministerial work. Yes, they may be able to do that, but you cannot mix Article 1 and Article 3. So that means that the judges in the courtroom can't be Article 3. All you got to do is sit back and think about it. They cannot mix, people. That makes, pay attention. If they were capable of mixing, if they were capable of mixing the court, Article 1 and Article 3, that would make every decision made when they mix and match jurisdictions. You can't share two jurisdictions at one time and parties have to be made aware as to the jurisdiction of the court. Two jurisdictions cannot exist at the same time. They cannot cohabitat. You cannot have federal jurisdiction and state jurisdiction simultaneously. Pay attention, people. Understand how jurisdiction works. Well, I'm the sheriff. Well, I'm the captain. And we both have jurisdiction. No, you don't. Only one can have jurisdiction at a time. Well, they say the county and, 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 and the city and, and the state, they can have concurrent jurisdiction. No, they cannot. Now, they can as being part of the executive branch, but when it comes to the three different branches, they cannot share jurisdiction. You see, county, state, city, those are legislative issues when it comes to legislative jurisdiction. But pay attention, county, state, and city, when it comes to the courts, it's all the judicial branch, just like the executive branch and the legislative branch. Do you understand? They don't mix and match ever. It's a principle of law. So Article Three judges don't exist when Article One judges are present in the same arena. That means they must all be, pay attention, Article One judges. Can't be Article Three judges, because you can't mix. Whew, I'm so glad I got that off my chest. I've been wanting to say that to y'all for weeks. Lord have mercy. Well, not since I heard it from the stupid court. She just confirmed it when she said that bankruptcy court judges, because see, what you guys don't know is the courts have ruled that the bankruptcy court is part of the district court. Go ahead. Go just type in bankruptcy court is part of the United States district court. Go ahead and type that in Google and see what it says. Impossible because bankruptcy courts are legislative courts. I've been saying that for years, and then there are court cases that say they're not legislative courts. That's a lie. Williams versus the United States, 1933, is a case where a judge of the, we just went over it the other day again, but I've known about this since I looked at it in 2012. It's a case where a court of claims judge, Article One judges, brought a case because they were refusing to pay him the salary for which he agreed to. Because the statute said a different salary, but they agreed to pay him a different salary, and he wanted the salary that was agreed to and not the salary that was mandated by statute. Supreme Court went through this whole litany of stupidity and then finally said, no, he's got to go according to the statute. He loses. Bye-bye. Adios, Williams. Beep, beep. Got to go, son. That's what they did. No. <sighs> Legislative courts, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder, things are not going quite right. Shh, don't tell nobody, okay? Well, how do you get to an Article Three court? We're going to talk about that in another video, not this one, because I got something else I want to talk to you about. Got a little bit of knowledge we're going to talk about. At 10 minutes, 
We're going to talk about this Dow Jones. They said they closed at more than 300 points lower. And it's the work, worst, 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 worst week since June as Semi Valley, Semicolon, Silicon Valley Bank collapses, sparks sell off. Ladies and gentlemen, why is Silicon Valley Bank, why is SVB so important? Well, because many companies were holding their money in SVB. That's Silicon Valley. <laughs> All those tech firms. Everybody, a lot of people was going over there, hey, put my money in your bank. Bank said, all right, we'll put your money here. Hey, hey, hey. we can't promise it's going to be here when you come back, but we're going to put it here, okay? Yeah, man, you can put it there. No, we gonna, no, we got faith in y'all. We got tons of money coming in. So go ahead and put it there. And they took the money and ran. Out of there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go over this article here, hold on, got to get my screen to move. There is a lot of talk going on. Didn't they talk about the, look at that. They've lost 75% Standard & Poor's. They've lost 75% of their value. Oh, snap! Now, and you'll, you'll see all the symbols for SVB. Where's SBV? Oh, those were all the other S's. So you have Silk Road Medical. Then you have Shockwave Medical. Oh, they must have had a shock. Okay, people, they're showing you the percentages of these different indexes. They're called indexes, and they're showing you the difference in how much they've lost over the past couple of weeks. However, nobody's paying attention. Today is March 10th, 2023. One day after the anniversary of March 9th, 1933, the 90th anniversary was yesterday. Yesterday has never seemed so far away, but that was only yesterday. I can't believe in yesterday. I don't believe in yesterday either. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that being said, it appears that you want to be starting something. You got to be starting something. Something has gotten started. So if you're not preparing, you need to get prepared. Because, of course, they're about to do something, ladies and gentlemen. Look, this is an off season. We haven't even entered spring yet. Spring is in for another week. As a matter of fact, 10 days, well, it's actually 11 days from now, 10 days from tomorrow, 11 days from now is spring. We haven't even hit spring yet. Ladies and gentlemen, they shouldn't even be discussing losses and banks going under. But when you find out about SVB, oh, look at that United Airlines. Dang it, they went up a little bit. Man, I was hoping they would be going down. United Airlines, the piece of, anyway, company. Um, Two-year treasury, two-year treasury, that's down. 0.3%. <sighs> oh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is the reason why they're highlighting this now is because they're trying to prepare you. Remember, they always warn you. Roku. Anybody? I have a Roku television, ladies and gentlemen. I have two Roku televisions. One of them is a 50-inch television. I use it as a security monitor. The other one is a... 32 inch television and I use that for watching and distractive things like YouTube on the, that screen as opposed to my tablet which is actually a tablet Roku 26 percent of its cash reserves were in Silicon Valley Bank <sighs> ladies and gentlemen FDIC only covers up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars Bag nabbit. Okay, but of course they had, pay attention, of course they had insurance. Oh no, you don't just put your, you don't put your money all in one basket, people. Come on now. So we're going to leave this alone, but I really believe something has gotten started. Okay, let's talk about what I really wanted to talk about. Let's get rid of all of this. 
and let's watch the ocean. You guys don't mind watching the ocean for a moment. Let's talk about something. In 1492, this Spaniard named Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Yes, he was Spanish. He was not English. There's a lot of misconceptions. Christopher Columbus, yes, what a name like Columbus, and he was a Spaniard. Ain't that something? Well, anyway, Christopher Columbus, because the Spaniards had already arrived at America, that's why they had control of Florida, and the whole Louisiana Purchase section of this so-called North American continent. The Spaniards were already here. So Christopher Columbus knew this was America, America, Rosanna. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, meet you all the way. Sorry about that. That song was just in my head. Ladies and gentlemen, when Christopher Columbus came here, there was something that he brought that wasn't here before. Yes, there was some things here, but that wasn't here before. So let me tell you, and I promise you, if you have never thought about this, you will learn something. There is prejudice everywhere you go. Every nation has their group of people that they hate, that they treat differently, that they treat as lesser thans. You go to India, they have their caste system there. You go to China, the same thing. You go to Pakistan, the same thing. Every nation, Africa, many of their nations, and the groups within the nations, there's always one group, either they're indigenous or otherwise, that are treated differently. You go to Australia, the Aborigines are treated different. The Amazonians in Brazil are treated different. Every nation has its prejudice. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't understand where I'm going. The United States is unique. Now, I've told people that I have often taken, not offense, but I've taken exception to people claiming to be persons of color whose skin tone is not of African descent. Now, what do I mean by that? Because everybody is of African descent. Everybody originated in Africa. Every single nation, that's where civilization on earth began, Africa. Civilization for everything began Africa. Pay attention, Africa is where everything began. We've already, scientists have already said this, they've already discovered it, so not a point to argue. However, the reason why I've taken exception is because people have misunderstood racism and prejudice. Okay, pay attention. Pay attention. I want you to make sure you understand. In the United States, persons of color, blacks, are the only ones hated because of the skin color. No other person is hated because of their skin color in the United States. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You're going to make up something. Stop it. Stop it. Because history shows that that's the only group in America that's been, oh, you're going to say Indians. No, no, hold on now. Wait a minute, hold on. That's where we're going. Indians and Hispanic people or Latinxes, Latin Americans. They, they call them Latin Americans, okay? You see, you know why they do that. Because it's a derogatory term. When they say Latin America in America, that's a derogatory term. That's not a term of identification and... <sighs> prestige. No, when they're saying Latin America, they're saying sub-America. They're putting America north as in being better than Latin America. Go ahead. That's why they keep it uh, third world. Go ahead. Look at all the nations in Latin America. And look, none of them are nuclear powers. Go ahead. <laughs> none of them are extremely wealthy. Go ahead. Go take a look. I didn't do it. That's by design, people. Now, hold on. Let me point this out because I promise you, you're going to learn something. Ladies and gentlemen, in America, there are three types of prejudice. Well, one, as I mentioned before, people of color, the ones they refer to as black Negroes, ex-slaves, those are the only ones who were ever enslaved. Yeah, 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 they tried to enslave the Hispanic. They tried to enslave the Indians. Uh-uh. 
but the blacks were the ones they did enslave. You see, the Hispanics and the Indians, they didn't bring to this country. Yes, they did from Mexico. No, 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 no. This was Mexico. Pay attention. Go back. This was Mexico. This whole North American continent was Mexico. Pay attention. So I know what I'm saying. I'm not mincing my words. But this is what I want you to understand. There are three types of prejudice. The Indians were hated not because of their skin color. Okay, the Indians were hated because somebody took something from them and they fought back. Go ahead, go check the history. That's the reason why they were headed. They, they came up with all kinds of stories about raping and killing and decapitating people. Ladies and gentlemen, those things only happen, remember when they first came over, the Indians did not give them a problem, but when they started taking from the Indians, the Indians fought back, wouldn't you? Okay, so they're hated because they fought back. Go ahead, go look at the history and tell me I'm wrong. I know you can come up with all kind of little small little, but the root issue is they are hated because they fought back. And then as a punishment for them, what did they do? Try to chastise them and punish them for using their native language. Refusing to allow them to speak that in schools. Yeah, you know, it's just recently that they started allowing them to you speak their own language in schools. Shh, don't tell nobody. Like I said, hate it because they fought back. You go, boy, all you individuals that they refer to as Indians when you are not Indian at all. Indians are from India. These are Native Americans. Get it right, people. Why do you think they take offense to tomahawks and chiefs and, you know, all of that dumb stuff? Because we keep trying to label people and trying to identify them by labels. Stop doing that. Okay, now let's talk about the Hispanic people, the people from South America. Now, remember, it's called South America because it's meant to be derogatory. No, not because this is called North America. Pay attention. It's called South America because it's meant to be derogatory. See, North America is, remember everybody that lived to the north? That's where the rich folk live. The poor people live down south. Go ahead. Every single city, South Central Los Angeles, talk to me. Okay, the Bronx, Queens, come on now. But Staten Island, whoo Manhattan, those are all to the north. Hold on now. Doesn't matter if it's northeast. It's still to the north. So. When you say South America, you need to understand that's by design. That's not just, well, it's it's South and North America. That's why it's South America. Really? Remember, they're both called America. Pay attention. They're both called America. They weren't separate at first. Okay, now that we gotten that out of the way, the treatment of Hispanic individuals is different. They were not enslaved but they're treated different because they're treated as second-class citizens. They're treated as the trash. Well, you don't believe me, go look at Puerto Rico because that's how Puerto Rico's treated. Look at how they talk about New Jersey all the time, as New Jersey is not worthy of being a state of the United States. Same thing they talk about Puerto Rico. This is the history. So ladies and gentlemen, there are three types of prejudice. Three in the United States. One, is the prejudice against a person because of the color of their skin. Then you have the prejudice against a person because of their heritage, Native Americans. And then you have the prejudice against a person because they belong to a particular class, a group of people, Latin individuals, Spanish language, Latin language, Latin speaking individuals. And it doesn't matter if you're Latin, and you don't speak a bit of Latin, you only speak English, you know what I mean. So with that being said, the next time you hear a person of color say about their hatred and how this happened and that happened, please don't compare yourself to them. And they can't compare themselves to you. Yes, 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 yes. they're hated because of where they're from, but remember, their hatred, the hatred against them is because of the color of their skin. Okay, they can hold claim to that because no one else in America is hated because of the color of their skin. 
No, 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 don't, it doesn't matter. Whatever you say, it doesn't matter. Because that's the only one whom history has documented is hated because of the color of the skin. No, just because you found one book that says this other group, blah, blah, blah. That's because somebody's trying to make it seem like it's not as bad. Every time I look up, they're trying to blend in so much and make it seem like, well, police officers kill white people too. Excuse me? What's that got to do with it? What's love got to do? Got to do with it? Okay, what's that got to do with it? That wasn't the subject matter. It's the disport, disproportionate killing. Now, as I told you guys, they're not killing black people because the police officers hate black people. They're not killing African Americans because the police officers hate African Americans. They're not killing the Negro because they hate the Negro. No, 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 that's not why more persons of color die than others. They're killing them because of prejudice. It's built into their training. It's built into the American psyche. If you don't believe me, why is it that we have to go to the court to get things corrected? Why is it that Congress are the only ones who can tell us what prejudice is? Because they defined it in a statute? And the very same men who promoted prejudice, the very same men who promoted slavery, they're the ones who came up with the definition of what prejudice was? Of what discrimination was? Ooh-wee, ain't that something? Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have a lion and a wolf and a fox come to the chicken coop and the hen house and say, all right, we're going to establish some rules around here. But that's exactly what has happened. Even for the Indians, who made the rules for the Indians? All you got to do is, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You're going to see the commonality. The people who have Latin descent, Latin origin, who made the rules for them? So when you start to see what's going on for what it is, go ahead and look at the statutes and how they are written. They're written to have the least effect whatsoever. That's why you can't accomplish anything. So challenge the statute as being intentionally prejudice, intentionally discriminatory. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not the same rules. They came up with affirmative action. Does anybody know when, remember when they came up with affirmative action? Because individuals of color were not being given the same opportunities in these colleges and these schools. And then all of a sudden, 20, 30, 40 years later, the very same people to whom were denying them the rights, the lawyers came in, that's right, lawyers, not individuals, but lawyers came in saying, well, no, that's discrimination because we have equal protection of law. And so, uh, blah, 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 blah. Apartheid is illegal in America, but you want to know what isn't? Saying that affirmative action was discriminatory. Pay attention. <laughs> Affirmative action was something put in place to defeat the discrimination that was taking place. And the very same people who objected to that are the very same ones who came in later and said, that's a denial of equal protection of law. And then what did the Supreme Court say? Supreme Court, they're right. Really? Then how could you have been right by saying it was, affirmative action was lawful, and now you're saying it's unlawful? Now that's interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, the prejudice in this country is unique. It is the only country who has such prejudice. Yes, other countries have their prejudice, but the United States and Britain are the only ones who's ever hated persons of color because of the color of their skin and spread it throughout the whole world. No other nation has, no other nation has ever done that. No other, well, the Jews, no. The Jews were hated because they were, at one time, God's people. Then they, literally, as a nation, killed his son. Okay, so yes, that's why they're hated, but they're not hated because of the color of their skin. There's only one group on the planet who's hated because of the color of their skin. Now, if you don't believe me, all you gotta do is think about it. As Rock Helm would say, think about it. Think, 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 think about it. All right? Hey, that's 30 minutes of your time. I hope it's worthwhile.
because you ain't going to get it back. Have a good day, y'all. Had something I wanted to say.